with antagonisms of the moment, we often forget how much unites all the members of humanity. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? When it comes to Von Braun, I cannot help but wonder if at the end of his life, he had second thoughts about many of the things he had participated in during his younger years. As on his deathbed, he warned his friend and co-worker about the agenda that he had helped materialize in his earlier years. The agenda he had left out in the open. Dr. Carol Rosen worked with Von Braun and became a close confidant. She was an aerospace executive and missile defense consultant. According to her, Werner Von Braun became close to her near the end of his life. He seemed to want her to understand a dangerous sequence of events that he believed were pre-planned by a covert group he was once involved with. Rosin listened, and she took it to Congress. Here is her testimony. Here is Von Braun's warning. Good morning, my name is Carol Rosin. In 1974, after being a sixth grade school teacher, I was introduced to the late Dr. Werner Von Braun in the U.S., the father of rocketry. In my first meeting with him during that first three and a half hours, he said to me, Carol, you will stop the weaponization of space. And I said, uh, you know, teachers don't stop until June. He said, no, you have to understand. This is February, and we have to prevent the weaponization of space because there is a lie being told to everyone that the weaponization of space is now first being based upon the evil empire, the Russians. There are many enemies, he said, against whom we're going to build this space-based weapon system, the first of whom was the Russians, which was existing at that time. Then there would be terrorists. Then there would be third world countries. Now we call them rogue nations or nations of concern. Then there would be asteroids. And then he would repeat to me over and over, and the last card, the last card, the last card would be the extraterrestrial threat. Well, at the time, I kind of laughed when he said asteroids, and when he said extraterrestrials, I knew I wasn't going to deal with that subject. And now we hear on the news just today, this week, that they've slid in another enemy. Only this time we're going to protect our satellites. In other words, we have to have some reason to spend these trillions to waste these dollars on a space-based weapon system, and they're all lies. This is a system, he told me, that would never protect anyone. Even back then, he talked about suitcase bombs. He talked about chemical, viral, bacterial, bi biological warfare that these space-based weapons would never protect us against. And then he told me that, in fact, if you travel around the world, which I did after he died in 1977, I met with people in over 100 countries who were friends. They didn't want to build space-based weapons. I became a space and missile defense consultant. And I worked with people around the world. I became uh, an advisor to the People's Republic of China. They don't want to build a space-based weapon system. And he told me back then that they didn't. He said, go to Russia. They're considered to be the enemy. I got on a plane by myself. When I got to Russia, I had a list of people that I had read out of the newspaper. Chernenko was in office then. He was the only one I didn't get a chance to meet. They introduced me to everyone when I got there. And when I got back, I said, oh, my Lord, this man is telling the truth. There are, is no threat. And I've been waiting until this day for 27 years. And I'm expecting the spin to happen because he also explained to me that in the, as a military strategist, as a person who worked on the MX missile, which I did later, he said, you will find that there is going to be a spin to find some enemy against whom we have to build space-based weapons. And now we should expect the spin, because he said part of the formula for the intelligence community is if they might have a weapon, then we have to consider that they do have these weapons. So now they do have these weapons, so now we have to build these weapon systems. And that's the formula, except that it's all based on a lie.
So Werner von Braun warned that there would be a sequence of events that would occur that usher an unwitting humanity into a dark, tyrannical age, a new world order, that a dark, covert group would manipulate us by creating false events that trigger our greatest fears. They would use these events and use this fear so that they can then weaponize space. And from that position, exact an unchecked and complete level of power over the earth, over humanity. This would occur first through conflict with Russia. Terrorism would follow. Asteroids. And then last of all, the extraterrestrial threat. So the last card according to Rosin and Werner von Braun, would be exactly what he described in his book, Project Mars, The Weaponization of Space. What is even more chilling is that apparently this threat agenda did not die with Werner von Braun, because as recently as 2016, new characters have stepped forward to reveal that UFOs are not only real, but a potential threat to humanity. Luis Elizondo spent 20 years running military intelligence operations worldwide in Afghanistan, the Middle East, and Guantanamo. He hadn't given UFOs a second thought until 2008. That's when he was asked to join something at the Pentagon called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, or ATIP. We're establishing a baseline here. I think what's happening is that Congress is is beginning to build a box around DOD, acknowledging that it's real, that it's important, it's a national security issue, it's a national security issue, national security issue. Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification, from a national security perspective, identify those things that we see. And what I wanted to do is to allow the data to speak for itself and then use that data to inform leadership, senior DOD leadership, about the potential threat, the potential threat, the potential threat that that these type of, of technologies pose to national security. Look, and I know you think it's important. I know you think that the government didn't take the threat seriously enough. So, so let me just ask you point blank the question. Do you believe that that life from somewhere else, while you ran this program, came here, visited, observed. I will tell you unequivocally that, that through the observation, scientific methodologies that were applied to, to look at this phenomena, that these aircraft, we'll call them aircraft, are displaying characteristics that are not currently within the U.S. inventory nor in any foreign inventory that, that we are aware of. And, and determine if that information is a potential threat to national security, is a potential threat to national security. Don't come in peace. Maybe they do. A former Pentagon official now revealing the UFO encounters have resulted in mysterious injuries to witnesses, including, but not limited to, unexplained burns and electrical shocks. Here with me now, former director of the Pentagon's Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, also known as AA TIP. It is Lou Elizondo. Welcome back, Lou. When individuals, fighter pilots, uh, in some cases, came too close to UAP, Um, They experience negative consequences. They are in our restricted airspace. They're looking at our nuclear weapons. There are times when they have turned off or on our nuclear weapons. And this is well documented by our own military. And we now have those reports. No. Well, they 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 tamper with nukes. This is something that I hope will be revealed. This is something that is in the, the Gillibrand, Senator Gillibrand mm. Amendment, is to look at this. The, the tampering with nuclear weapons by these unknown uh, craft. This is something that goes back decades, and it's something that is now oh. proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. You see this as a threat, a threat, these things out there. Well, we're clearly vulnerable, and it's very disturbing. So you see this as a national security issue? Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know. I mean, how could we look at it? How could it not be when you've got vehicles that are routinely penetrating restricted military airspace and we seem unable to engage them effectively? We have no idea where they're coming from or what their capabilities are. 
or what their intent is. What was once considered a, a joke is now seen by a lot of people as a genuine national security issue. Ex when Elizondo took over in 2010, he focused on the national security implications of unidentified aerial phenomena documented by U.S. service members. Former Navy pilot Lieutenant Ryan Graves calls whatever is out there a security risk. I would say, you know, the highest probability is it's a threat observation program. Anything that enters an airspace that's not supposed to be there is a threat, is a threat. The encounters by pilots like Ryan Graves focused on the threat to U.S. national security. I don't think it was terribly surprising to see it framed as a threat. I mean, what we have to remember is that the skies above us have been militarized since at least World War I. To the Pentagon, they're a security threat, possibly from Russia or China. Others ask the question, are they extraterrestrial? Given you're, you're a fighter pilot, you're out there, when you see something that doesn't make sense, is that a threat? You know, a threat means something very specific for us uh, in a very specific scenario. So an unknown aircraft operating in our training space where we're not expecting other aircraft, that very simply is a threat to us. A threat is about uncertainty, it's not about intent. These rather predictable announcements just so happen to align with a devastating pandemic and now a potential war with Russia. The trauma of these situations destabilize humanity and make them more vulnerable to accept circumstances that we normally would not. Almost all cards are being played at once. Pandemic, a war, economic uncertainty, potential food shortages. We can't help but wonder, is all of this to break us down so that we accept a new paradigm? <laughs> 